Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Stories with Sally. I have a great story for you this week, and I want to tell you a little bit about the inspiration behind this story. The title of this story is Harry the Dirty Dog. And I don't know if you, if you have picked up on this, but a few times when I have been in the middle of story time of doing a read aloud, you may have heard a dog barking in the background. Well, that is my dog, Duke. And last week, he got a little loud during my story. And so I thought, you know what? Maybe Duke is ready for me to have a story about a dog. So that's why I chose Harry the Dirty Dog this week. Let me tell you a little bit about Duke. Duke is a very special pet. All pets are so special, aren't they? Well, my in-laws, my husband's parents, have a beautiful home in the country. And about five years ago, while my children were visiting them at this home in the country, Duke showed up. Duke appeared, and Duke was just a few months old and was in pretty bad shape. He'd just been out wandering around the wild and the woods, and he didn't have a home. And so my children fell in love with Duke, and with the help of their grandparents and their aunt, they got him all cleaned up, took him to the doctor, got the shots he needed, and they begged us and begged us to please let them bring Duke home so that he could be our dog, our pet. And finally, after a few weeks of begging, we gave in and we said, okay, it's time for us to have a special pet. And so that's how we got Duke. Now, Duke has become quite a runner, which is perfect for us because we do a lot of running in our family. And so Duke goes on runs with us. And I'd say he may be the fastest runner in our family. Duke is also very scared of thunderstorms. And whenever there's a thunderstorm, Duke goes and hides in a closet. So we really have to take care of him during thunderstorms. He also loves chasing squirrels in the backyard. And when we're not home, we've realized that Duke likes to go into our bedrooms and take naps on all of our beds. He just goes from bed to bed. He's a silly, silly dog. And today I have a story about another silly dog. So Harry the Dirty Dog, the author, the person who wrote this story is Jean Zion. It says by Jean Zion. The illustrator, the person who drew the pictures is Margaret Bloy Graham. It says pictures by Margaret Bloy Graham. And when we open the book, we see the title page that has the title of the story, the author, and the illustrator. And then we come to the copyright page. And it's real small. And this tells us the year the book was written and other important information. And boys and girls, this book was written a long time ago. This book was written in 1956. That was almost 20 years before I was even born. I was born in 1975. And this book was, born, was written in 1956. So guess what? They had pets back then too. Okay, this is also a fiction story. So it's not real, it didn't actually happen. It is a make-believe story. Remember, fiction is fake, not real, and nonfiction is real, not fake. Harry was a white dog with black spots who liked everything except getting a bath. 
So one day, when he heard the water running in the tub, he took the scrubbing brush and buried it in the backyard. Then he ran away from home. He played where they were fixing the street and got very dirty. He played at the railroad and got even dirtier. He played tag with other dogs and became dirtier still. He slid down a coal chute and got the dirtiest of all. In fact, he changed from a white dog with black spots to a black dog with white spots. Although there were many other things to do, Harry began to wonder if his family thought that he had really run away. He felt tired and hungry too. So without stopping on the way, he ran back home. When Harry got to his house, he crawled through the fence and sat looking at the back door. One of the family looked out and said, there's a strange dog in the backyard. By the way, has anyone seen Harry? When Harry heard this, he tried very hard to show them he was Harry. He started to do all his old clever tricks. He flip-flopped and he flop-flipped. He rolled over and played dead. He danced and he sang. He did these tricks over and over again. But everyone shook their heads and said, Oh no, it couldn't be Harry. Harry gave up and walked slowly toward the gate, but suddenly he stopped. He ran to a corner of the garden and started to dig furiously. Soon, he jumped away from the hole, barking short, happy barks. He'd found the scrubbing brush and carrying it in his mouth, he ran into the house. Up the stairs, he dashed with the family following close behind. He jumped into the bathtub and sat up begging with the scrubbing brush in his mouth, a trick he certainly had never done before. This little doggy wants a bath, cried the little girl, and her father said, why don't you and your brother give him one? Harry's bath was the soapiest one he'd ever had. It worked like magic. As soon as the children started to scrub, they began shouting, Mommy, Daddy, look, look, come quick. It's Harry, it's Harry, it's Harry, they cried. Harry wagged his tail and was very, very happy. His family combed and brushed him lovingly, and he became once again a white dog with black spots. It was wonderful to be home. After dinner, 
Harry fell asleep in his favorite place, happily dreaming of how much fun it had been getting dirty. He slept so soundly, he didn't even feel the scrubbing brush he'd hidden under his pillow. Okay, boys and girls, that is the story about Harry the Dirty Dog. Now, we have been talking about characters and setting. And the characters in the story are the people or animals who are in the story. And in this story, the main character is, of course, Harry the Dog. And then you have the family. And the family, you have the mother and the father and the little boy and the little girl. So they are also characters in the story. And then you have the other dogs that he played tag with and the construction workers and the people who were working on the street. So they're minor characters. They're not the main characters of the story, but they're part of the story. Now remember, the setting is where the story takes place. And in this particular story, the setting changes. So the setting begins at the house and the setting ends at the house. But in between, when Harry goes on his adventure, that's part of the setting also. When he's running around the streets and he's playing tag with the other dogs, where that happens, that is also part of the setting. So remember, a lot of times the setting changes during the story. Today, I'm gonna to introduce you to something else that helps us become better readers, and that's to think about the plot of a story. And the plot of a story, that is the problem and the solution in a story. And usually, it has to do with the main character and the problem that the main character encounters and then how that character solves the problem at the end of the story. Well, the first part of the plot is when Harry realizes he doesn't like to take baths. And so he solves that problem by hiding the scrubbing brush. But then, he spends the day getting dirty, and so he has another problem. When he goes back home, his family does not recognize him because he's so dirty. And so he solves that problem by finding the scrubbing brush and getting his family to give him a bath so that they'll recognize him again. So he solves that problem also. So remember the plot. The plot is the problem, and then the solution in a story. All the events that happen as part of the problem and the solution. Okay, I also wanted to mention that if you would like to see pictures of our dog, Duke, I put a lot of great pictures on the trailer for this story time. So if you go to Stories with Sally on YouTube, and you can find the trailer that I put up a couple days ago, and you can see pictures of Duke. Now for the takeaway this week, I want you to think about a pet. It may be your own pet, or it might be a pet that a relative has. Or if you can't think of a pet, I want you to be creative and come up with a pet that you would like to have. And what I want you to do is I want you to write down things about that pet. The way the pet looks, the way the pet acts. So I want you to get your ideas on paper. That's the most important part of writing, okay? And don't worry about, if you don't know how to spell a word, that's okay. You can draw pictures, you can spell words, just try to spell them the best you can. We can worry about spelling and grammar later. What's important this week is that you get your ideas on paper. Thank you so much for joining me for another Read Aloud on Stories with Sally.
and I hope that you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.